so long, right? Okay, anyways, uh, let's just talk about what we're going to do today. Uh. Okay, so I never really went through LT to you guys. Okay, today our goal, right, is to try to ask all the questions. Okay, not all, uh, okay, but try to do all the important questions. Uh. Okay, but generally speaking, right, I'm just going to do a quick recap you know, of LT to you guys first. Because it's been a while, uh, okay, I, I don't know whether you all can remember LT or not. Okay, but after we, gone through, we, we go through all that already, okay, we recap, then we will talk about the tutorial. Okay, so I printed the notes for you guys also. Uh, okay, but we have no time to go over every single part of the notes. Okay, I have Elkin's lesson recordings on the Google Drive. So you really need me, right? If you really can do the refresh, then you can watch the videos. But as for today, I'm just going to recap a few things. Okay, so number one, right? When we look at Elkin's, if we generally look at the main reaction, uh, if y'all can remember what that reaction is, you all remember? No? Okay, so take note, uh, Elkin's undergo this thing called the electrophilic addition. Okay. So I'll go over the mechanism probably once. Okay, so we probably need to go through a few parts of the notes. Okay, then later we start the tutorial. Okay, so perhaps right, okay, we look at the notes first, lah. Then you can write all this down in the notes. Okay. Um I want you guys to take a look at page. What's it? Uh, page 50. Eh, sorry. Okay, go over the page 11. Okay, we're gonna look at page 11 and 12, and we're gonna use this to cover a little bit of our basic. I can't go over every single page, lah, okay? So, again, we shall use the questions later to discuss. Okay, we go over the page 11 first, okay? And I will go over the mechanism once, right? So, the title of it is called Electrophilic Addition, and it's important for you guys to understand, right, why. Why is the name called Electrophilic Add? Okay, so, first of all, guys, alkenes. Are alkenes saturated or unsaturated molecules? Unsaturated, good. Okay, because of the fact that they have a double bond, right? Okay, double bond is unsaturated, and unsaturated means what exactly? Okay, you have less than a maximum of four atoms around carbon, right? You're going to count up, okay, you're going to take a look at an alkene molecule. You'll notice that you cannot surround a carbon in an alkene, right, with four atoms. At most, three, because you only have a double bond, right? Okay, so unsaturated molecules, you can still add stuff to it, because we have not hit the maximum atoms around carbon yet. So because of that, right, when it undergoes un uh, when, when it undergoes addition, okay, you can just add stuff very simple. The next thing is electrophilic, electrophile. Guys, what is an electrophile? Okay, with that, right, we'll kind of need to recap a few things up. Okay, what's the definition of an electrophile? Yes, good. Okay, it's an electron poor species. On the other hand, we have a nucleophile, right, which is a Electron rich species. Okay, good. So again, we need to look at the different ways to identify rich and poor species. If you see a poor species, right, usually you'll see a what charge? Okay, plus charges, right? Either plus or partial positive charges, as you can see. On the other hand, we have electron rich species. So you see obviously a negative charge or what? As long as you have something, right, then you're considered an electron rich species. What is this something? Lone pair of electrons. Good. Okay, lone pair of electrons classifies you right as an electron rich species. So for example, right, let me quickly go over some examples. Huh? Negative charge species right, can be like OH minus, okay, where you can clearly see a, a clear a minus charge, right? Or VR minus, a halide ion. Okay, these guys are it's not the fact that they have a negative charge that makes them rich. It's the fact that they have a lone pair that makes them rich. On the other hand, that means uh, you don't actually need to have a negative charge to be rich, right? So that's why you have stuff like water. Water doesn't have a negative charge, but we know for sure oxygen has a little pair. So there are many types of neutral pumps. You will encounter, you'll encounter both types right, okay, as we go along. Okay, but anyways, electrophiles examples, you'll just look at the mechanism. So you can turn over to page uh okay, page 11 first. Uh, I want you all to look at the overall mechanism. We take a look at the overall balance equation first. Uh, so just to make things a bit more simple, I'm just going to draw a two carbon tree, and this guy is going to react with a yeah. And I want you guys to just take note, just notice what happens to me. Can you just tell me what you observe over here? What happened to the molecule? Just, just tell me what happened. Okay, you notice what happened to the double one? Did the whole double one break? Okay, what bond specifically was broken over here? Okay, good. It's not the whole double bond that breaks. In fact, it's only the pi bond that's broken. Agree? 
Now the pi bond that is broken over here. Why is the pi bond broken and not a sigma bond? It's because the pi bond is always pi bond compared to sigma bond. Pi bond has to be what? Weaker. Exactly. The pi bond is weaker, so that's why it's the only one that breaks. Okay, and the next thing you can see, uh, the moment it breaks, right, you just chuck the H and then chuck the Br on the carbon. You can see that. So that the carbons all still have all bonds. Okay, this is the overall equation. What we are interested in is the mechanism. So guys, take a look at the mechanism now. You can put it over to the next page. You can just draw this mechanism out. Okay, so again, uh, the first thing you need to draw in the mechanism is the part. First thing you need to write on that blank piece of paper. Okay, yes, the title is uh, the title is needed first. Okay, so just gonna write down your electrophilic addition first. Okay, I'm just gonna write it in short, but you want you to spell out the whole thing. Okay, but with that, right, then we can start with our first step, and then we don't move on to our second step. Very simple mechanism. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna start off with our double bond, and then we're gonna draw our HPR. HPR, I'm just gonna draw the bonds as well. Huh? Because I need to showcase the movement of the electrons. Okay, and the first thing that you ought to do uh, is to remember the flow of electrons in the mechanism. Guys, how do electrons flow up? Uh? Is it just anyhow, whatever you feel like? What's the rule over here? Good, okay. Electrons must always flow from rich people. And I need you guys to under identify first. Uh. Okay, perhaps uh, you all will make a guess here who is the poor species? What exactly is the poor region? Okay, it's the H. Good, because why H? Why do you all pick the H? Okay, because H and B are this bond is a what bond? It's a polar bond, right? So there's an electronegativity difference between H and B. Are. So you can clearly see that H over here is poor. Because it's poor, it can be attacked by a rich species. Want to make a guess what a rich species is? It definitely has to be the other guy, right? Okay, the other guy here has to be the number one. So what we're going to do is this. Uh, arrows represent the movement of electrons. So you don't start from the carbon. Uh, because carbon don't have electrons. Uh, carbon don't load back. The electrons of carbon is all your bonds. Okay, so the double bond over here must affect the H. Why double bond? Because you all can clearly see, right? That it's the double bond that gets broken in the first place. So there's a rapid reason to everything. Yeah, we're not saying all this for fun. Okay, double bond affects H, and guys, H can form how many bonds are? Huh? No matter what. You can only form one bond, right? Okay, so initially it had one bond with VR, but now that you attack H, right, what must happen to the existing bond? Definitely must break, right? And then give the electrons to VR, since VR wants the electrons so badly. Just give it to him, not? Okay, so in other words, uh, okay, we have this. Now remember the second rule of mechanisms, uh, okay, we have rich attacking poor. That's rule number one. The second rule to bear in mind is this. Guys, when you gain electrons, uh, what part do you have? Plus or minus? Okay, definitely a, uh, sorry, minus charge. Huh? Okay, gain something is always a minus charge, and I don't know. Okay, then you, on the other hand, when you lose electrons, you must then have a plus charge. Okay, so now you take a look, uh, guys. The carbon, okay, this is where things get a little bit tricky. Uh. When the pi bond is broken, it attacks the H. Now, there's only one H, right? So you only have one H to only go to one of the carbons. Guys, does it matter whether it goes to the first or second carbon in this case? Uh, it's the same shape, right? Okay, so take a look closely. I'm just going to add it to the carbon on the left. If the hydrogen goes to the carbon on the left, does the carbon on the right get something? Okay, now only have one H. Uh. One H can only go to one carbon on the left. Now the carbon on the right uh, broke a bond and never got anything in return. The carbon on the left broke the bond, yes, but it got back that H, so still fine, right? Break one, get back one, fine. The guy on the right, he broke one, then he's like, what the shit, I'm not getting anything in return. So guys, what charge does he have? Yes, because he just lost something, right? Because that's not fair. Okay, so the carbon on the right now is a plus charge. This is your carbo cation. Okay, this is the intermediate carbo cation. Now, you don't need to write the word carbo cation in your answer, but we're just going to write it out here. Okay, so one arrow, one action. Uh, okay, if you do one thing, you only get one thing. You return. Now, guys, look at VR. What happened to him? Gaining or losing? He's gaining some electrons, right? So he must become VR minus. 
So you notice know, I have to put the plus with a circle over there just to differentiate it with the plus that you see in the equation. That's my own preference. Lah. Okay, you don't have to mind. Okay, so we have the carbon that I want to read. And now uh, the second step is very, very simple. Okay, we have the carbon and the plus part. Okay, uh, what do we do next? We take a look at the overall equation. Lah. This second step is the final step. And the final step must definitely have this guy over here, right? So what's happening? What do you think must happen in the second step in order to get the final product? This guy is a plus charge, but then suddenly the guy is a BR. So what must happen? Okay, the BR minus is there, right? The BR minus is rich or poor? Rich, so it affects the carbon that's poor. Long. It's as simple as that. Okay, but guys, a few things, huh? Can you just draw an arrow like that? What must there be on the BR minus first? What must we show? Again, I must see a lone pair because as I already said, arrows represent the movement of electrons and the electrons must be shown and then you attack the carbon. Again, you're forming a form with carbon, not the plus charge up, you make it abundantly clear. That's why the second set is very simple. Just one simple arrow and then you get a final answer. Oh, okay, so far. There's one more detail we need to add in. You all know what it is? One small detail of the arrow. Okay, slow and fast step, right? Okay, pretty much a slow step now. Guys, you'll make a guess. Huh? Look at the nature of step one and the nature of step two. I want to make a guess which one is the slow step. Okay, first one, why? Good, okay, the first one involves a lot of bond breaking. Again, huh? this is like breaking up. Okay, you see, huh? this girl together with this guy. Now, the guy is not giving the girl enough attention, right? Okay, so because of that, she's like, shit, I need to find a new boyfriend. So if you go and find a new boyfriend, don't get together with someone new. But at the same time, when you get together with someone new, she's monogamous, right? Okay, you need to break up with her current boyfriend. All these are very painful, okay? A lot of pain, a lot of sadness, that's why it's very slow. Okay, so that's why the first step has to be the slow step. Why is that weird? Why is that weird? It's perfectly nice. It's so, it really aligns with it, right? Okay, but you see, uh, the guy that got broken up with is very sad because he's a shit boyfriend. So because of that, he definitely feels very negative, right? That's why he needs to get together somehow. Right? <laughs> very sad. You mean with a lot of negative emotions, you have to get together with someone new. So you're going to find another girl who's also feeling very, very crap, right? Okay, then you just get together long. Okay, very simple. As simple. Okay, it's like that. It's like that. It's like that. Okay, breaking up or getting together with someone more painful. Definitely breaking up, right? You get together with someone else, uh, generally very simple one. Uh, Right, okay, just get together, see how things work, okay? If things pan out good for you, lah, then they end up together. Okay, so that's why the second step is the fast step because you only see bond. Okay, bond forming. Yeah, okay, that's just mechanism in general. Okay, so in Aries, uh, you all think, or you don't remember the psychotic, uh, the X that doesn't want to leave, is that benzene, the H that doesn't want to leave. It's the same idea. Okay, a lot of things can draw to real life. Uh. Yeah, okay, so can so far. Okay. My stomach feeling a little bit queasy because I ate the samyang noodles last night and it's I'm starting to feel it now. Okay, halfway through, I might need to use the toilet. Yeah, the spicy noodle. Now I'm feeling it already. It's coming soon. So I want you guys to do the mechanism. So I think I better go toilet first. Okay, I'm very one of you guys. Okay, you all see page 12 and onwards. Uh, there are a few more mechanisms that you all can try. Help each other out first uh, because, wow, shit. Okay, it's feeling a little bit, okay. I I have a little question. I don't think I'm going to do that.
Okay. Oh, come on, back. ten minutes. Oh, oh. Every time I create somewhere like the worst time, it's only ten minutes. Like the next morning, yeah. it's only the night. Yeah, I always pray that I do for it. You know, next morning always suffer. Okay, me and me help anywhere. Okay, what have your done so far? Okay, you are you on page like 21? Is that the page? I'm not sure. Oh, okay, okay. So what have you all done so far? 21 or so. Because I know there are some questions like even before that. So we shall look through that also. Now. Okay, because I, I realize I have also never talked about the mark on the to yet. If you go over that very briefly, because that part is quite important. Okay, then afterwards later, I'll just confirm the mechanisms with you guys. Okay, but mechanisms generally, I think, fine. Lah. Okay, I don't think I want to go through every single one of them as well. Okay, later, right, during the tutorial, we'll just do it one more time, then we'll just go through. Okay, but anyways, uh, okay, can we look at page 14 first? We backtrack a little bit because my colleague was through uh, something very important. And I think we definitely need to understand how this works first before I look at bigger molecules. Okay, if you all notice, uh, in my mechanism that I do just now, did it matter where the H went? It didn't, right? Okay, because this molecule here is perfectly symmetrical on the double bond. But what if it did matter? Okay, so you take a look uh, at this thing over here. We draw the same electrophilic addition mechanism. But this time round, the first step is going to be this guy here. Is this a symmetrical LP? No, okay, it's not. Okay, so that's why, right, now the H matters up where it goes. I'm going to attack HPR again. So what's going to happen is the rich still affects the poor. Same as before, this bond will break. Now just take a look at what happens next in this slow step. I'm going to label the two carbons on the number one because these are the two carbons that I have. I have carbon A and I have carbon B. Now between these two carbons, huh? okay, let's look at two different scenarios. If the H is bonded to carbon A, that means carbon B must have the what? Okay, if H went to carbon A, carbon B must have the what? Plus charge. Good. So let me label this first up. But on the other hand, our guys, the H could also go to carbon B. That means A must now have the plus charge. Can you see that? We have two possibilities. We didn't really go through this idea in uh mark uh, in your earrings, uh, okay. So this one's quite important also. You all notice uh, they're not the same thing. Okay, so our job here is to determine the major product. What on earth is the major product? It's the product that is more what? Okay, it is okay. Uh it's the product that's more likely to form first. Okay, we look at that level one. The product that is more likely to form is the major product. And a product that is more likely to form is a product that is more. Stable, which is what you mentioned just now. Okay, so let's discuss this. Uh, we are trying to figure out which compound here, which carbon pair ion is more stable. Okay, the left one or the right one. Okay, so we work backwards a little bit. Uh, can we all follow this train of thought? To determine which compound is more stable, we are looking at the carbocation. Now, first of all, uh, what is a carbocation? Okay, let's write it down here. What is a carbocation? Is it an electron rich or electron poor species? Okay, there's a plus charge there, right? So it's definitely electron poor. 
Now guys, electron poor species, do you think they are stable or unstable? Unstable, right? Okay, that's there's a reason uh, why the carbon cation isn't the final product, right? That's not stable, ma. If it's stable, it would have been the final product already. But now it's an intermediate, and we know intermediates generally are unstable. And that we can know that uh, because we know that for a fact because carbon cations are poor. Poor compounds definitely not going to be stable one. So that's the nature of a carbon cation. Uh. And coming back to the train of thought here, which carbon cation is more stable? If the carbon cation is more stable, it implies the carbon cation is less poor or more poor. Less poor. The less poor you are, the better one, right? Okay, it works in real life also. Okay, you want to be less poor. So guys, the less electron depletion carbon cation is the carbon cation that is stable. Now, how do we determine which carbon cation is less poor? You look at each carbon cation. Okay, I want you to determine first how many alkyl groups are bonded to this carbon cation. Just one, right? Okay, this carbon here only has one alkyl group bonded to it. Agree? So this is known as a what carbon cation? Primary. Now this guy here, how many carbo, how many alkyl groups are bonded to the carbon at the plus charge? One, two. So this is a secondary carbon cation. Now remember, guys, another backtrack over here. Alkyl groups, what effect do they have? Good. Okay. It's not very basic, it's not you all need to know. Huh? Alkyl groups are electron donating. So imagine this. This guy has one person giving electrons. Or imagine this, huh? Let's just say this person is poor. Imagine this person is single and lonely. Very deprived of love. Right? So now, there's a guy giving, let's say, a guy is giving you attention. Oh, that's great. Right? Okay, don't feel as deprived as poor. But you imagine this, uh, this guy, this person here, this girl, right? Maybe she's more pretty. So got two guys giving attention to her. Which one do you think is more favorable? Which one do you think is a better scenario? Which one do you prefer? You prefer one guy giving your attention or two guys? Oh, what? Okay, it's not... That's not the intended answer. <laughs> no what? More guys giving you attention better what? Right? Isn't that great? Okay, you feel more love. Yeah, so that's the reality, right? More guys giving you attention, you should feel more love. And that's the better scenario in most of the cases. So, in other words, uh, guys, alcohol groups are electron donating. The idea is the more the better, right? You don't feel as poor as before. We're trying to find which one is less poor. Now, in both cases, uh, can you see, right, there are alcohol groups. They do make the carbons less poor, but relatively, who is less poor? If you compare them with each other, okay, the second one, okay, very clearly. So, in other words, uh, guys, the less electron deficient one has to be the secondary carbon cation. And the reason behind that is very simple because the secondary carbon cation has more electron donating alkyl groups than the primary carbon cation. And that's pretty much the whole answer. So I broke, I broke it down for you guys, right, okay, in a backward manner. Okay, we start from the end first. Now we can figure out who is the major product. Based on this fact over here, it is the secondary carbon cation. In other words, I only want to see that as your answer. Uh, sorry, that should be the only species you draw right in your mechanism. Okay, I repeat myself one more time. Uh, this mechanism, right, you must draw the major product. But in real life, uh, can you form only a major product? No lah. Okay, major just means more likely to form, but that doesn't mean this guy has zero chance of forming. You must acknowledge that uh, real life is always a bunch of products. Okay, so once you draw that, okay, then afterwards you can add your PR or to the carbon, then they're very simple for you. I'm not going to draw the second step. In other words, okay, you can turn over the page 50, right, and you can pretty much draw this entire part over here on that page. Okay, so I suggest, huh, okay, just follow me first. Page 15, you see the big fat box there, right? Draw in this part mechanism, this mechanism first, and lay down these facts. The explanation, uh, there's one keyword that I'm going to introduce to you guys. So the explanation, uh, the logical flow you all can write now first, but leave a bit of space for the actual explanation, which I'm going to write on this left hand side here. Okay, you all copy down whatever you need to do first. I'm going to write down the explanation at the side. Okay, just copy out and print it. Okay, so I rewrite the whole thing in a more logic manner.
Say as your copy again, don't just copy by blindly. Right. Uh, try to go sense it as your copy also. I will highlight all the keywords on the do the do the same as well. Okay. I'm going to explain the okay, so copying this part of once over here. I'm going to talk about what this first. Okay. okay, so what does this first mean? Okay, so you all know already, right? Both of these plus charges signify that the carbons are poor. But then there are, of course, in both cases, uh, there are people giving electrons to this poor dude, right? So they become less poor. So the charge, right, the size, uh, does it become bigger or smaller? It becomes less poor. Smaller, right? Because if you are not as poor, you don't need to be as desperate. So you will get okay, the charge will become smaller in size. So okay, both cases you know that the charge will shrink, right? Okay, but which one shrinks small? Secondary, because you have more people giving you electrons, so it becomes even less poor compared to the first guy. We can't use the word string, so we just use the word this first. So you can think of it as string. Lah. Okay, so that's just what it means. We just have to add it inside, and then afterwards you can talk about the less poor and all that stuff. So I'm gonna add in this new keyword, which you need to write down the answer also. Okay, and this is a very important idea, one of the most core concepts in our keys. Okay, and once you are done with this, uh, okay, I'm just gonna uh, I'll just take a look at your mechanisms later. Okay, perhaps right. We do the question of page 17 and 18 first. Yeah. Then afterwards, I want to quickly move on to the what do you call that? oxidation really. I want to have a bit of stuff to discuss. Have you all done the question of 17 and 18 yet? No, right. Okay, then never mind yet. Okay, we check the answers right for your page 21, is it? Is that the one that you all did? Okay, so the one on page 21. Okay, um, you know, I just see your answers first. And then afterwards, I think you do something with it. So I'm attack, attack, or three or three of the actors. I mean, the exploratory, so you can try to go attack. I need to see the button. Okay, you know, I do not know why this has. Okay, so you attack already, and it's a press. Okay, there has to be partners, but just when you want to attack something that's poor, okay, so just think of that. Okay, and there's the other mechanism on the next couple of pages. If you want to talk about that, so. Okay, perhaps the only thing I want to go over this part, right? Okay, so for electrophilic addition, right, there are actually three types of reagents that we are covering in our syllabus. The first one I went through with you guys just now, which is HX in the gator state. The second one is halogens in the elemental states. So bromine is liquid and chlorine is gas now. Okay, so that's why I put both there. The last one we're going to go through, right, is to in the first state. So there's going to be water involved. Now, for this second one that you're doing, right, the second one over here, they can say PR2 liquid, but sometimes, right, they can say PR2 in CCL4. CCL4 is a non-polar solvent. But don't worry, the CCL4 don't have, don't have anything to do with the mechanism. 
So it doesn't appear we should, we, we, because you are correct. Now. Okay, no CCL4. Why we don't use PR2 liquid? Because sometimes in a lab, right? PR2 liquid will just evaporate the moment you just open the thing. Very volatile, okay, quite difficult to use in the lab. Okay, so sometimes you see this instead. Okay, but anyways, uh, the part that I want to go through is this. If I have LT uh, and then PR, PR, is there, should there be like, partial charges over here in the first place? Just now I have partial charges for HPR because HPR is a what one? Polar bond. But is there a polar bond? PR, PR. No. But yet, uh, you will still see partial charges and you will still see the alkene attacking the uh, actor. Why? Why are there partial charges? So weird. Okay, how do these partial charges come about? Okay, because I want you to notice something. Uh. PR, PR is initially a non polar bond, non polar molecule, right? So the electron cloud is evenly distributed, right? There's no electrons like towards one side or another side. But then now, guys, if you put it, put this uh, near an uh, electron rich region, what do you think will happen? A lot of electrons concentrated here. What will the electrons here do? It will be repelled, right? Okay, They will repel and they will go away from the electron rich region. Think of it this way, like there's a smelly person on the bus. You don't want to go near the person, right? Okay, You will go away from the person. So think of alkene as a smelly person, right? All the electrons will be like, shit, okay, we have to go towards the right hand side. Okay, so the electrons are concentrated towards the right and less towards the left. So can you all see, right, that there's going to be a uneven distribution of electrons? So that's why you will end up with partial charges. And guys, what kind of dipole is this? Okay, so let me just know. You can note it down also. This is your induced dipole. This dipole was created on the spot, so it's induced law. If you compare that with HBR, what dipole is this? It's permanent because it's a polar molecule. So this has been created since the start, really there. So it's a permanent dipole. But this is only created because of the fact right, that it's put beside the electron rich region. Can you see that? There's a question in the tutorial we've discussed in this, so we have to come back to that in a bit. Okay, but now I'm going to discuss the next scenario. Okay, so we all take a look at the next scenario. Okay, turn over to page, let's say, I think it's 24, right? Okay, you have done the same thing here, okay, but I think uh, I really might have seen some errors. Yeah, I really see some small little errors. I don't see the first step is generally fine. Okay, let's take a look at the, at the last one. Okay, you all have recognized it correctly, yeah. I have aqueous, which means there's going to be water present. Uh, guys, uh, perhaps let's look at the mechanical first, huh? Okay, you write down your electrotic addition. The first step, okay, guys, I draw in an LT. Right? Now, the next thing, what do I do? What should I react with? Okay, I'll put it here. Okay, yes, you still need to react with. Okay, let's just say I'm using PR2 equals up. I have to still react with PR2 because I have a rich species. I need to react with something that's poor, correct? The only poor species that I have uh, is still your PR. Because you put it close to L3, you are going to induce charges. You can see that? So it's the same first step as just now. You attack like that, you attack like this. Now guys, in your notes, uh, you all draw ET. But now, right, I drew an asymmetric, asymmetrical molecule. Where should the positive charge be? Really be on A or B? Okay, where should your class charge? Now don't care about the bromine. Where should your class charge? Because just now uh, we look at carbon cation being more stable. So I'm interested in the class charge. Okay, even I mean, now maybe you're not sure, right? You can draw it out, but yes, the carbon cation, the class charge should be on carbon A. Because on carbon B, uh, this is primary, you can see that. Okay, but guys, once your class charge is on A, that means B must have what? Plus charge from A, so B must be the one that attaches itself to the PR, right? You see that? Okay, then you get BR minus also. Okay, so far. Now then afterwards, uh, this is where things get a bit tricky. Draw in your carbon can I don't think guys, what's next? What must attack this guy? Or what? What species? What type of species? What class of species? Nucleophile, right? Because nucleophile is rich. What are the nucleophiles in this reaction? Okay, there's PR minus definitely, right? Okay, but there's also what? 
I have water. Not only is minus, I have water because it equals mark. Now the thing is, uh, can both of them react? Definitely. Nothing is stopping them from reacting because both of them are rich. But again, uh, in a mechanism, I'm only interested in the major product. The major product is like the most likely to form one. So guys, which one has a higher chance of reacting? Okay, let me give you all a scenario. I'm going to show you all the overall balance equation. Now. If I take this and I react with Br2 equals, this right here will be my final product. So some of you guys see OH and you're like, oh, I'm just going to take OH minus, but guys, we don't have OH minus. Huh? We start off with water. So that's where the, 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 the last step comes into play. But guys, if you see, uh, this carbon has an OH eventually. Which one do you think reacts? Can it be Br minus? No, right? It has to be water. So guys, the question here is that why is Br minus a lower chance of reacting? And why is water with the lone pair a higher chance of reacting? You attack this carbon over here, right? Any guesses first? Why is water right a much higher chance of reacting than Br minus? Why does it have a higher chance? Because what is water acting as in this question? Solvent. It's a solvent, and solvent definitely has to be present in large excess, right? Just the answer to be no. Okay, because water is present with such a larger amount, obviously it's a higher chance of reacting. Again, I'm only concerned with the higher chance of reacting. So just by looking at this, uh, guys, you will notice that I will react with water instead. Guys, does it mean Br cannot attack at all? Br minus? Okay, does it mean Br minus cannot attack at all? No, uh, it's just a very small chance. But can, you can still get the product. And I want you guys to, know, to learn one important thing from this question. Uh, one arrow, one action. Okay? One arrow, one action. So guys, do you think I'm going to get OH at the very end of the game? I have one arrow. I should not suddenly turn water into OH. You cannot do both at the same time. So guys, take a look at what happens here. My water is going to directly attach. Water has two bonds, two features like this. It's still going to be there. Because one arrow, one action. I didn't get rid of the other OH. Okay, you take a look at O. Does something look weird about the O? How many bonds can O form generally? Okay, what's happening here? Wow, why so weird? How can water get form three bonds? Never mind. Guys, what happened to the oxygen here? What is it doing? Is it losing or gaining electrons? Oxygen, what is he doing? He's giving electrons away, right? So what charge must he have now? Plus charge. So guys, there's a few ways of looking at this. Oxygen has three bonds, okay, lah, plus charge. But the more better, the better way of looking at it lah, is the fact that oxygen has lost electrons. That's why he now has a plus charge. You can see that? But we cannot end it off there. Because clearly, uh, the final product only has 1H. So how? What must happen? What do you think must happen here? Ah, okay, one of the OH bonds must break, right? Okay, I choose the guy on the right. Uh, this guy must break. But for the H to leave, uh, something must come and take him away, right? It's like that psycho X partner. The one to leave. Somebody else must come in and steal him away. So who do you think uh, is rich enough to steal the H away? Is there any other rich species here? You have a Br minus here, right? So this Br minus can come into play over here. His lone pair can be used to steal away this heat. Then what are you going to form? Br and H forms? HBr. So that's another byproduct. At the same time, guys, what must happen to this bond? H can only form one bond, right? So form a new one already. So what must happen afterwards? You must break ready and go towards O. Why O? Because O is what? Right now. It's, it's, it's poor as shit, right? He's saying that he's poor. He needs electrons. Give it to him now. Give it back to him. Now, uh, O gained the electrons, so he loses the plus charge. He now becomes neutral. And that's the final answer. So this second step, right, has two arrows. Uh. Okay, so think of it that way. This mechanism, Different. Different from what I was before. 
Okay, just need y'all to notice uh, one arrow, one action only. Don't go and suddenly do two things. Okay, so far? Okay, now. okay so that's for page 24. Okay, again, now. okay, we're just gonna use some of the questions in the notes as like our tutorial questions to solar. Okay, but before we go back, we backtrack, okay, I'll take a look at page 26. There's a few things we want to answer over here. Okay. Guys, you take a look at the question. I'm just gonna summarize that question because it's a bit long-winded. We are two equals up. Okay, it's faster than we are two in CCL4. So basically, the third reaction is faster than the second one. I will drop his answer Why? Now, faster. Faster, we are taking a look at the rate, right? Guys, what affects the rate? You take a look at the mechanism. The slow step or the fast step affects the rate. Good. Okay, so I want you guys to be very careful here. The slow step will affect the rate. Only the slow step. And you take a look at the reactants in the slow step. Huh? My slow step contains an alkene and BR2 for both scenarios. Does the solvent here affect the slow step? Is the solvent even in the slow step? No. The solvent water appears in a fast step, which I don't give a shit about because it doesn't affect the rate. Huh? So somehow, uh, guys, we are not talking about water versus CCL4. Okay, just to be very clear cut here. We're not talking about a very straightforward water versus CCL4 solvent. No. We are instead uh, talking about how water and CCL4 influences PR2. Because again, it is PR2 that gets affected. It is PR2 that's in the slow set. So we need to tweak our answer a bit. It's not about how water is polar, CCL4 CCL is non-polar, or oh, then that's why polar is faster. No, not, not so easy. Can okay, you see what I'm trying to get at first? There's a reason why I'm talking about this. Let me repeat one more time. Okay? Rate, look at slow step. A slow step don't have the solvent direct. So it's not about the solvent. It's about how the solvent affects PR2 because PR2 is the one that gets affected by the solvent. So that's the angle we are trying to look at. Uh. In the, at the end of the day, we still need to talk about PR2. So once we've gotten that out of the way, uh, we come and look at this. Now, PR2, first of all, PR2 is, uh, it has partial charges, right? Okay. PR2 has partial charges because of what? Who, in, who creates the partial charges? When you put it close enough to the alkene, right? Okay, so let me just draw the alkene here, another alkene here. We draw both scenarios. Okay, so fair enough. Okay, you put the PR close to it. But somehow, our uh, guys, from this pattern, we can already see that the solvent must affect PR2. So beside this PR2, I'm going to draw one CCL4, and then I'm going to draw one water molecule over here. Now, guys, CCL4 and water, what's the difference again? One is a what solvent, and one is a what solvent. CCL4 is a what kind of solvent? It's a non-polar solvent. Remember, uh, CCL4 is a very common non-polar solvent in like real life, actually. Okay, so how about water? Water is a polar solvent. Okay, so clearly this has something to do with how it affects PR2, right? Now, first of all, water is polar, very right? clearly. You can see CCL4 don't draw anything. So if you put a polar molecule beside PR2, uh, PR2 already has these charges, right? But what's going to happen here? You put the H right with a partial positive charge near this, what do you think will happen? Okay, see, uh, the electrons are already repelled away to the right hand side, right? But now you have a plus charge pulling electrons even more to the right, right? Can see that? So, because of that, you all see uh, the difference in electronegativity is even greater. I will put two plus and two minus. That one's not very correct, uh, but just to show you guys uh, the difference in electronegativity here uh, is even greater than this one because you have an external influence of a polar molecule. It's non polar, it doesn't do shit. Can you see that? So, with this added additional effect, right? Which PR is poorer? This one, right? This one even more pushed to the right, right? So, the PR on the left are really dry, and right? low electrons. So, since this guy is poorer, does it get attacked faster or slower? He's more desperate, right? Imagine this, uh, this person is really a uh, single for like 20 years. Uh, it's not single for five years, maybe not so bad. It's not single for the for the entire life, right? His entire life. So it's like shit, cannot already. Must definitely go and find someone. 
So it's more desperate. So I just draw two arrows just to show you guys. Again, two arrows is wrong. Uh, it's just to say first. It is just a visual diagram to help you see uh, the more poor someone is uh, faster the reaction. You can see that. The more desperate you are, the confirm gonna act faster. Okay, so that's the idea here. To look at the explanation, it's very simple. First of all, you tell me right, water is polar solvent. CCR4 is a non-polar solvent. You state the difference first. But guys, this has nothing to do with the rate. Huh? You must then tell me how it affects the R2. Okay, so take a look. Hence, water will polarize. That's the word for repelling the electrons to one side. That's the word. Okay, it will polarize the electron cloud of bromine to a larger extent than with CCL4. Since it's more polarized, we already said the BR is more desperate, more poor. So the BR is more electron deficient. Thus, it's more readily attacked by an L2. That's why it's a faster reaction. You can see that. Okay. So we see the influence here. Water is influencing the two in this case to a greater extent. Okay, then the key here is more poor, so more readily attacked. So that's the idea. Okay, and okay, I'll prepare the next question also. Okay, so don't don't even look at the notes, huh? you just look at the board. Okay, take a look at this next question. PR2, uh, propene reacts with PR2 equals with a uh, touch of NaCl, so an additional ingredient. Okay, so let's just uh, break down uh, all these things. What are all the species present over here? Okay, obviously we have PR2. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, definitely more. Huh? Okay, what else do we have for this question? Okay, we have Na plus and Cl minus. Okay, so a few things here, uh, but there's one guy that we don't really look at, which is your Na plus. Because uh, have you seen Na forming a covalent bond by we attack? So uh, Na doesn't form covalent bonds, uh, okay? So that was just a spectator ion, we don't care about it. Okay, so here we have three different species, we are to water Cl minus. Okay. The question is uh, which species, one of the four options there, is not possible. I'll draw the four, four species later. Which are not possible. Okay, so first of all, uh, let's draw in the mechanism or the first step, right? Is our protein reacting with what again? Br2. Okay, nothing else uh, must be Br2 first because Br2 is the electrical power. So when you attack the Br, uh, show positive, is some great. Okay, guys, what does the carbo ion look like? Where should the plus charge be? A or B? Okay, yeah, you see what I'm doing here? Always look at the plus charge. Ah, okay, the plus charge on A, that means B must have what? The normal BR also is normal. Okay, then you also form BR minus. Okay, so this is like the same as before, right? Okay, but now let's take a look at the second step. Uh. Now that my carbo can ion looks like this, can you take a look? Uh, what are some possible rich species, nucleophiles, that can attack this? Okay, good. There's BR minus anything else? There's H2O, anything else? Good. CR minus is the additional thing that we added in, right? So can all of them attack it? Definitely. All can. Okay, so we have a mult we have multiple products over here. Okay, so actually I don't even need to draw it inside. You all can visualize. Now I'm going to draw in the four options. And I want you guys to look at the four options, right? I know the blows will be hard to see. Look at the four options and tell me which one right, is definitely not possible. 
Okay, uh, I know the answer is printed there, but that was a typo. But why? Uh? Okay, yes. Okay, so if okay, let me just reiterate one more time. Okay, you can very clearly see uh, some of y'all can see the pattern very quickly here. But you notice uh, all the rest are possible. Because the you realize uh, it really doesn't matter which nucleophile attacks. Okay, all the nucleophiles can attack, they're only asking for which one is definitely not possible. And the answer here is this guy is not possible because uh, you can see from the intermediate, you must minimally have at least one VR atom. So next time when you all see this question, right, you don't have to bother about all this. Uh. You just want to find the electrophile. The electrophile is VR. If your compound no VR is gone already. So go ahead and write down that you must have at least one VR because this guy is an electrophile. Okay, note this down uh, because I know there's an answer written there, but if you don't write it, write it down, you won't absorb anything. Right? Okay. Yeah, there are some other reactions, uh, but I don't think I want to go through that because those we learn in halogens also, like elimination, we learn in halogens as well. So I'm not going to talk about that here. Hey, perhaps elimination, we just fill in the box on page 30, right? Because we did it once already. I'll see whether you can remember how to do it again. Okay. You can't remember, you look at the notes for elimination, huh? but for page 30, 3, 0, they ask you to draw a diagram illustrating CZ's rule. It's not very important, so I think it's good to go over again. Okay, so we're going to look at your elimination reaction, right? Okay, so first of all, can you draw the products when you eliminate this compound? Can you give it a try? So you draw this in first, give me all the products that you can draw. You can find. Remember the rule for elimination of the carbon inside the PR must have H. Okay.
Yeah, we go through uh, maybe you forget a bit already. Okay, so remember uh, guys, when you all remove, okay, what's elimination? Uh? I remember telling you guys there's one big thing you just you really need to remember. What's elimination even doing? Why why are you eliminating? Good. Okay, this is all you need to know. Uh. You cannot remove anything else in your syllabus. Uh. Okay, maybe there's one more. Uh. You can remove water, but it's very similar. That one we will look at it soon. Okay, next year. You remove HX, guys. So the you remove the halogen is PR now, obviously, right? But when you remove the H from can it be from the same carbon? Doesn't make sense, right, guys? You cannot remove the H and the PR from the same carbon. If not, how are you going to form back a double bond? Double bond means uh, two carbons are affected, eh, right? So the carbon that gets affected is the carbon beside it, agree? So beside this, does it have a H? If the answer is yes, just remove it. Okay, so one product here is the double bond here, correct? Any other places to remove? To the left, does the carbon here a H? Yeah. Remove also. So there's another species. Yeah, okay, see that? That's all you're doing. Remove from the left, remove from the right, settle, finish. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, guys, there's one more product. It's an isomer. What is it? Ah, that, 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 that's the answer. What is it? Yes, good. Okay, the line in the middle here is the trans isomer. And then over here, we have the cis isomer. Okay, so you just need to know these three products here. Okay, then we just quickly move on to the next reading. Okay? Can so far? Okay, we quickly go over the last part. I'll go over the rules for oxidation. Afterwards, okay, maybe we can take a break. Right? Okay, so take a look at the last part of this topic. Uh. It's need to recap one more time because it's quite important. Okay, other than electrophilic addition, we also have oxidation. How on earth does alkenes undergo oxidation? Okay, let's find out. Okay, there are two types of oxidations. Uh. The first one is called mild oxidation. Okay, guys, what's the opposite of mild? Okay, strong. Okay, but more commonly, right, we will use this term instead of. Uh. Okay, strong oxidation is known as oxidative heat. Okay, we'll look at that soon. Okay, but this is a strong oxidation. Okay, we look at how first and how is very simple. This one I don't really care. Okay, we take a look at mild oxidation. Uh, if we have an alkene, uh, mild oxidation will just turn the alkene into this thing here called a diol. What's a diol? All means alcohol. Alcohol is OH. So now that we have two OHs, it's called diol. Uh. Okay, that's all there is. Uh. Don't see that there's nothing more to this right? Guys, can you notice our bond is broken over here? Sorry? Is it the whole double bond? More specifically, what bond is broken? Okay, same as electrophilic addition. Uh. Only the pi bond is broken, correct? Is that very difficult or very easy? Okay, pi bond. Pi bond is weak or strong? Okay, it's very weak, uh. so it's actually very easy to break this. How do we know it's easy to break? They all look at the reagents and conditions. Uh. They all notice uh, they use KMNO4, which is the oxidizing agent, obviously. H2SO4 and O. Guys, why am I like O? Uh? O signifies that it is very easy to break a pi bond. Your conditions don't need to be very strong to break pi bond. Guys, what's the purpose of H2SO4? Now remember, I just need you to know this in general, right? KMNO4 is useless, right, without an acid of this. Okay, so you want to add NaOH, go ahead also. Like, the notes use NaOH, right? But guys, NaOH are discouraged because you have an additional observation over there. Okay, I'll go over the observations once. Huh? If we use H2SO4, right? Your purple KMNO4 will just be colorized. And that's it. But if you use NaOH as an additional observation that you can see in the notes, you can see a brown precipitate being formed. So go ahead and highlight that. Huh? Brown precipitate is only if you use NaOH. If you use H2SO4, you don't see that. Okay. So if you don't want to memorize so many things, I'll suggest that you see H2SO4. Okay? And that's pretty much it. Uh, uh, there's really nothing to say for bar oxidation. It's super straightforward. You don't really need to know how this works. Uh, just accept it. Okay, thanks so far. Now guys, let's take a look at strong oxidation. This is more important. So once you're ready, turn over to page 32. Guys, just make a guess. Uh. The one on the left here is Mao. Mao is cool. So strong is what? P long. Yeah. Okay, then what do you end up breaking? Make a guess. I'm not going to draw anything else. Okay, you break the sigma, but if you break the sigma, that means you also break the 
high along with it. You can't fool someone, right? Okay. So over here, I'm going to break the entire double bond now. Both sigma and high. And guys, when you break an entire thing, right? How many products do you think you will have? Is it just one? Okay, most of the time, you will get multiple products. Why I say most of the time, later we'll see examples. Okay, so take a look. Uh, uh, I am going to draw the product first. You are probably not going to understand what the products do, right? So I'll look at it later with you guys. But you notice, uh, guys, I will break the entire double bond here. How many products do you think I'll get? Two. And the product on the left, how many carbons do I have? The product on the right, left. Just one. Okay, okay, I can see that, right? Okay, so I'll show you guys what the products are first. Later, I want to show you guys how to determine these products. But you have these two things. Okay, carbon dioxide and water is considered one tech. Now. Okay, later we'll see why. Never mind, ignore this first. Okay, one thing you want to look at is the ridiculous and conditions. Okay, KMNO4, H2SO4, and plus heat. Again, okay. stronger conditions allow you to break more shit. Okay? No, that's it. Now, what's important uh, is page 33. So you'll turn over to that. How on earth did I get all these products? Why look so weird? Uh? So let's go through this. Okay, for oxygen TVH, uh, the important part is getting all these weird products. So first of all, uh, guys, okay, I want you all to focus only on the top half of page 33. The bottom half uh, is can be derived after you know the top half. Okay, take a look. Uh. So number one. I have a carbon now. Once you break the carbon, right? This squiggly line over here represents a breaking, a breakage. Cleavage means to break lah. It's the same thing. Okay. So if this carbon here has two H's, what does that mean? Okay. So later we'll see lah. I have one carbon, right? You break it, right? Now this carbon has one alkyl group, or this carbon here has two alkyl groups. Now guys, there are only three scenarios, and it's just these three up. Okay. I I show you guys the rules first. Go write down the rules at the top of the page. First step: once you break ready, right? Add a O to the double bond. If you follow my two steps, up, you will never go wrong. Right? Okay. Number two: if have H. Add O to become OH. I say here, yeah, just turn the H to OH if there's a H. Come, ah, we try. Look at the second one first. I'll come back to the first one later. Now, for this second one here, what do we have? Carbon, the double bond must do what? Add O. Lah. Guys, is there H? Turn it into what? Guys, what do you do to the R? I never, I never tell you how to do anything right here, yeah, just leave it. C double bond O, OH is known as a carboxylic acid. You must recognize this functional group. Okay, carboxylic acid, can? So then, try, try the same thing. What do you do first? Add O to the double bond. What's next? I'm done, yeah, I'm done. Okay, so it's as simple as that. Like, right, seriously. Yeah, okay. This right here, C double bond O with two alpha groups. The core of keto. I know all these names are very weird, but they're just functional groups. The special part of the molecule. Guys, do the same thing for the first one. C, what do you do? And then? OH, and then? Okay, I'm just following the rules up. Now, guys, what the, what the shit is this? How come this one doesn't match the other one in the notes? Okay, just go and draw this in also. I need you all to take note of If you look at it very right, closely, right, this is H2CO3. Guys, we have learned in acid-based equilibria, this is a white acid. A very weak acid. Uh. And this weak acid over here will dissociate into, into what? Exactly. So it doesn't stay as this uh, because it's kind of weak, it's kind of unstable. So this is your final product. So there's a rhyme and reason to this rule. Uh, okay, this rule set isn't inconsistent. Uh, that's why I say uh, you follow you confirm correct. Okay, so again, uh, guys, you are not supposed to draw this H2CO3 out of your exam. Just straight away write the CO2 and H2O. I'm just showing you guys how, it's, how it comes about. Uh, okay. Okay, now uh, before I move on to page 34, I'm going to draw in examples. Uh, try to find empty space around the notes. 
okay, draw a right a bit smaller, and we're gonna draw in examples to discuss. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna erase the one at the top. Okay, let's draw in a few examples here to discuss. Okay, and I'll need you guys to try it. We, we go over the first one. Okay, so we have something like this. Okay, come. Our job here is to draw in all the products of oxidative image. Okay, of, of course, the very first thing, I think it's a good habit to draw this squiggly line over here. I like to draw that because it shows you exactly what products you're going to get. Okay? Now, what I like to do, right, which I can encourage you guys to do also, sometimes uh, the molecule can be very fat, very big, very complicated. So what you can possibly do is this. Go and separate, right? The two of them first. You can see that? I never do anything, huh? I'm just separating them. You can see? I just leave a gap. Huh? So imagine this, I take a pair of scissors, huh? then just cut this, and then just pull them apart. I have that. The double bond is really to do up. And O. And O. Guys, check for any H's. Does the first one have any H? No, you see all four bonds, right? There's no hidden H. Huh? Second one, do you see all four bonds? I only see three bonds, meaning there's one hidden H, right? Turn it one. That's my answer. It's simple. Okay, again, I'll just draw you one more example. Okay. Okay, go ahead, go. Right, go ahead. Try. The moment you get a hang of this, uh, this is honestly very simple. At the start, it is tough. Okay, steep learning curve, but easy to master. Right? Okay, so this is my cut thing. Hey guys, you cut right again. We try this. Okay, let's take a look. Uh. Guys, the one on the left, are you cut already, right? Then what do you do? Add O. Is there any cage you add O's to? Done. Okay, the guy on the right, uh, how many cages does he have? Okay, two cages. So you just instantly write CO2 water. Now, I want you to think a little bit deeper. I only gave you guys two examples here. But when do you see this first scenario panning out? There's a way to anticipate the first scenario. When do you have carbon dioxide and water forming? In what scenario would you see a carbon with two H's? When must the double bond be located in the molecule for the carbon to have two H's at the end? Okay, can you see that? It's only a double bond at the end. This is known as a terminal alkene. Write it down. Terminal means at the end, right? Whenever you have a terminal alkene just hanging at the end, you're going to anticipate carbon dioxide and water. There's no doubt about that. Obviously, the first one is not terminal. Like it's not hanging at the end, so you're not going to form carbon dioxide and water. It's a very, very, very useful tip. Okay. Okay, we are now going to look at page 34. It's going to be special, so hang on a uh, hold. Let's just bear with me for a minute. If you're almost done already, yeah. okay, so just spare me and then, and then we can end this off. Okay, let me read this part now. Hey guys, you know this, there's no need to remember what carbosylic acid ketone, there's no need to memorize that table because you just follow the rules already. Okay, now let's look at a uh, molecule up and let's do oxidative image once more. But now this guy has two double bonds. Guys, just go ahead, cut both double bonds. Okay, come let's try this. Okay, just cut both double bonds. Okay. Now remember, we are only concerned with the carbons that are involved in the cutting. Do you notice uh, that all four carbons are involved in the cutting? 
to make this a bit simple for ourselves, I'm gonna label this as A and B. I'm gonna call this guy C and B. We do it step by step. Guys, tell me what does A become? Okay, because how do you know that? How do you know that so quickly? It is a terminal of keys. A dude hanging at the end, end right? And any more terminal of keys here? Yeah, okay, very easy, right? Okay, A and B both form carbon dioxide and water. Okay, let's do B and C. Are B and C separate or together? Okay, that's why I like to draw the squiggly line, right? You can clearly see B and C are together. You can see that? Okay, uh, can you all give it a try? I'll draw the structure of B and C. Since they're together, I'm just going to call them B plus. Okay, can I draw that? Okay, all this, must try. I must keep practicing. Like, you keep practicing, you're going to get it very quickly. And once you get it, right, you'll never, you'll never lose. Okay, okay, very fast, all good. So guys, you cut already the double bond, you will just add O, right? Double bond, add O, right? Okay, you can see it's like both ends here. What else do you need to do? O, H, or E. You notice they're both the same kind, right? okay? So this is P and C. But guys, why is this a special case? Look at this structure very carefully. Huh? This structure here is known as thin. because two carbon trap, agree? Right? And then the next part is dioic acid. Ethane dioic acid. Don't ask dioic acid because we have two carboxylic acids, so it's di. You can see that? So this name you all need to know. Uh. It's not just I put it here for you to, to for fun, just be ready. No, you must know this guy. You must know this guy by heart. Uh. Because the moment you see this guy, you draw this guy as a product, right? The moment this guy appears with you, right? You need to turn him into carbon dioxide and water. Two carbon dioxide because of two carbons are quite self-explanatory. So guys, terminal alkene is not the only situation where you form carbon dioxide and water. You also form that uh, when you have this weird looking guy over here called thin dioxide. Yes. If you draw this, your answer is wrong. You must delete this guy, change it to carbon dioxide and water. So at the end of the day, uh, this guy right here, you see all of it is just carbon dioxide and water. You can see that? Now, when you form this ketane dialogue acid, just a little clip over here, right? Try to spot this pattern. Double, single, double. Okay, this is not a foolproof pattern. Uh. Later, I'll show you examples to see why. Okay, I'm going to show you two more examples right now. Okay, but uh, can you see this double, single, double? The moment you see double, single, double, uh, you're probably going to anticipate this way. Okay, I'm teaching you all to look at it one step ahead. Uh. Okay, so you don't need to do it slowly. Okay, I'll be sure at terminal out okay, look at it one step ahead. Eating that way as in another step ahead. Okay, so let's look at the molecule. Okay, I'm going to show you all. Okay, uh, okay. Let's look at yeah, okay. I want you guys to draw the structures for this. Cut the compound. Okay, go ahead and draw it up.
take a look. Yeah, we try this. Can both. How many products must you get in total? Okay, you cut two times, you get three. Imagine like, yeah, like cutting in real life. Now. Okay, so you cut this. You should get this is your first product. I go from left to right. Huh? Okay, the second product in the middle there. If you notice, it's the pattern, right? Double, single, double. So you're going to get two carbon dioxide and water. And then you have the product at the end. Huh? The product at the end is just this. Can you see that? You know, it's not just practice. Huh? Okay, can we try the second one also? Yeah, okay, try the second one. I'm just spamming examples. Huh? That's the best way to learn. Huh? Okay, later the notes got more examples for you all to do at work. Okay, so again, best way to improve. Okay. Come. Um, I see a double single double. So I get carbon dioxide and water, lah, right? No. Ah. Okay, so th this question here is trying to prove a point. Ah. This is not a foolproof pattern. I need you to be a bit more flexible than that. Ah. Take a look. The reason why this one don't have that pattern is because this guy is talking it up. Right. Okay. I hope you are able to see that. Ah. Okay, so don't blindly follow the rule. It's just a guideline for you. Okay, so I'm going to draw the answer. Left to right, huh? on the left, I have this. On the right, I have this. So it's a ketone and a carbostic acid. It's not that. Huh? And then finally, the last one is the same as above. All good? Okay. Let's do a few more questions. We, we get that. Oh, you want to take a break first? Yeah, I'll do this. Okay. Okay, okay, let me just do page 36 and 37. Come, oh, we'll give you a try. Okay, sorry, we missed out page 35. 35 to 37. Lah. Okay, only one time on target. Okay, you want to just go and try. Okay. Okay, practice a bit already. So these questions I can tell you all you won't have a problem. Lah. Okay, I always prepare you all enough. Okay, we'll go and try.
Der er en This kind of thing, uh, don't go tell me I'm warm before. Eh? <laughs> I'm still <laughs> hungry. <laughs> 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 oh, All right, I'll feel the answer. Huh? So, oh. You can perhaps check the answer for the first two parts first. Okay, the first part, you just need to make sure you notice the double single double pattern. Okay, you break like that, right? You can see there are two products, right? Okay, so you should have at least two products here. Okay, the first product is just that. Okay, but then the second product here is the double single double pattern. So let's change it to two carbon outside the pattern. Or you can draw that first, then you change it after. Okay, also fun. Oh good, the first one. Second one, this question literally told you guys to work backwards. Next time they won't tell you really yeah. Okay, so remove all the O's, right? Then just combine them together. Because I'm just reversing this process. Remove all the O's from O H, turn it become H. There's only one here, so you remove it, become H. Remove the O's from the double bond, join them together. Finish. Okay. Hello. Third one. I mean, why do I have one product only? Because I hope you all realize uh, that once you cut this, right? You still get one product, visualize that. Okay, it's a ring, a ring structure. You break really generally, you still have one product only. Unless you cut it twice, then you really have two separate products. Okay, now you can draw like that. Uh, people drawing like this because it's very easy to visualize. Or you can, if you realize that uh, it's just a straight chain, so you can draw it in a straight chain as well. Like what Hannah has done. Um, yeah, okay, what both of you guys have done, just realize. Yeah, okay, but personally, I just like this law. I don't know, maybe ugly for, for some of you guys. Okay, for the last one here, I converted it to skeletal because I really didn't like how it looks in the notes. Okay, so you will draw it right. I think it's a very simple question. Correct? Right. Okay, two products. Okay, again, carbon dioxide and water is considered a set. Okay. okay, the more oxidative cleavage questions you do, uh, the more you'll get it. It's really quite good here. Yeah. It's a Rapid, repetitive skill. Okay, so for now, I'll be taking a break first because later we still have another 15 minutes. Okay, so take a five minute break first. Okay, later we come back. Okay, yeah, uh, perhaps uh, you all look at the last part of the books, uh, page 38 onwards. That part I won't go through here because I realize uh, it's better to go through in the tutorial as I thought this over and over again. I realize it's more productive there. Okay, so usually now I'll skip page 38 onwards. Uh. Okay, we just take a break first, no?